The Tornado is one of the early examples of the pan-European aviation industry dream. Its successful design paved the way for more efficient air interdiction strike tactics. The aircraft has played essential roles in the Middle East, the Balkans and North Africa. Today we are investigating the Tornado, one of the most successful swing-wing combat aircraft. The Tornado, with its more intense and successful combat career and longer service life, can be defined as the best of its class compared to similar swing-wing air interdiction strike aircraft such as F-111. Of course, its ADV variant is not as brilliant as the legendary F-14. The Soviet swing-wing combat jets like the MiG-23 and MiG-27 are far from achieving the Tornado's success. Before, many European countries had cooperated in aviation programs bilaterally. But with this beautiful jet, Europe's leading military aviation companies took the first important step to work under one roof. Let's take a brief look at the situation that paved the way for the creation of the tornado. Until the late 1960s, the leading countries of Europe could not fully recover from the wounds of the Second World War and decolonization. In this new era, they did not have as much money to spend on new cutting-edge military programs. The rule was simple. You get what you pay for. Naturally, the USA became the leader in technology and the international market with its dominating economy. For this reason, European states realized that they needed to work together to compete with the US aviation industry. The UK was leading in this regard. The TSR-2 program was cancelled in 1963 due to budget problems. The Royal Air Force initially planned to acquire the F-111K, but the costs increased rapidly, so the UK also had to terminate this program. So, London began to seek new cooperation opportunities to develop new combat aircraft that would replace the Vulcans and Buccaneers. Considering the success of the previous Jaguar program, in 1965, the UK decided to collaborate with France on the Anglo-French Variable Geometry Program. The swing-wing design was the hot topic of those years. Many countries were investing in this field. This design allowed the aircraft to be more efficient at both high and low speeds and at both high and low altitudes. However, France withdrew from the program in 1967. The UK continued the swing-wing aircraft development works with Germany which was already working on a similar aircraft. In 1968, Belgium, Canada, Italy and the Netherlands decided to join them. But this partnership dissolved quickly. The main reason for this separation was that Germany, Italy and the UK required a strike aircraft. But the F-4E Phantom II and Mirage 3E proved the concept of the multi-role fighter. These new class aircraft were a cost-effective solution. Having an aircraft which is designed for a specific mission became a luxury. This factor would negatively affect the success of this joint program in the international market later. Germany, Italy and the UK continued the program alone. They founded Panavia joint company to develop the strike aircraft called Tornado. The aircraft made its maiden flight on August 14, 1974 and became operational in 1979. It was the airstrike interdiction variant, the Tornado IDS, whose Royal Air Force designation was Tornado GR1. The German Navy's naval air arm also used the Tornado IDS. These aircraft were equipped with the AS-34 Cormoran anti-ship missile for anti-surface warfare missions. Also, the Royal Air Force had the Tornado GR1B variant for the same mission. In those years, due to extensive radar networks of the Warsaw Pact, the concept was to perform deep strike missions at very low altitudes and high speeds. The combat jets of that time had severe problems, especially at altitudes lower than 100 meters due to turbulence, which caused vibration. For example, the F-4E Phantom II was experiencing 12 0.5G vibrations per minute and the F-104 Starfighter 5.5 times per minute. This situation was increasing the pilot and the airframe fatigue significantly. 
Also, it was preventing the bombs from being dropped accurately. The Tornado is equipped with sophisticated avionics and a fly-by-wire flight system which compensates for the vibrations automatically. The aircraft experiences only one 0.5G vibration per minute. The Tornado also has a basic hydromechanical backup flight system for limited flight control capability. Thanks to its advanced autopilot system with a ground mapping radar, the aircraft can cruise at 1000 km per hour at a 60 meter altitude. The wings are always swept in three positions, which are 25, 45 and 67 degrees. The airframe is made of 71% light metals, 18% titanium, 6% steel and 5% other materials. The Tornado can land and take off from semi-prepared runways and highways and stop at a distance of 300 meters during landing thanks to its reverse thrust. The Tornado is the first aircraft with a mission computer. This computer constantly stores the combat and maintenance data of the aircraft. The Tornado can perform a second sortie within one hour. The Tornado ADV variant was developed to intercept the Soviet bombers which used the wide radar gap between Iceland and the British Islands to reach the Atlantic. Having similar components in 90% with the IDS variant, it replaced the Phantom FGR-2s and Lightnings. The aircraft made its maiden flight on November 27, 1979. But because of the financial burden of the 1982 Falklands War, the program was delayed. It was taken to service in 1985 as Tornado F2. After delivering 18 aircraft, serious problems were discovered on the radars of the F2 variant. The design was reviewed again and the production was shifted to the new version named Tornado F3. Unlike other Tornado variants, the F3 Tornadoes had an automatic wing adjustment system. However, the Royal Air Force did not authorize the use of the system for safety reasons. The Tornado ADV could patrol away 600 km from its main base over two hours. It was an excellent interceptor, but its dogfight ability was poor. The Tornado ECR is the variant for reconnaissance and suppression of enemy air defense missions. It was developed to answer the German Air Force's demand. The aircraft made its maiden flight on August 18, 1988. The Tornado ECR is equipped with the RB199 Mark 105 engine, which provides 10% more thrust than the previous Mark 103. In this version, the infrared scanner and forward-looking infrared replace the 27mm gun. Also, the German Air Force is equipped some of its Tornado IDS with the Recolite pods for reconnaissance missions. Italy modified some of its Tornado IDS to the ECR configuration in 1996. Unlike the German variant, these aircraft preserve the RB199 Mark 103 engine and the internal gun. Similarly, the UK had converted some of its Tornadoes for the same duty and renamed them as Tornado GR1A. The Tornado GR4 and GR4A were the upgraded versions of the GR1 and GR1As. Germany, Italy and Saudi Arabia are still operating the Tornado IDS. Also, Germany and Italy keep the Tornado ERCs in their inventories. All Tornado ADVs are now retired. The UK is the former user of the aircraft. The Tornado IDS has a length of 16.72 meters and a height of 4.52 meters. The wingspan is 13.91 meters at 25 degree sweep and 8.6 meters at 67 degree sweep. Its wing area is 26.6 square meters. The empty weight is about 14 tons, while the maximum takeoff weight is 28.5 tons. Two 76.8 kN RB199 34R Mark 103 afterburning turbofan engine provides a top speed of Mach 2.1. The cruise speed of the Tornado is 980 km per hour. It can climb an altitude of 15,250 meters, in other words, 50,000 feet. The aircraft can reach a range of 3,890 km. The Tornado's combat radius is 1390 km. 
It has one 27mm BK27 internal gun and seven hard points. The Tornado IDS can carry the AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air, -air, AGM-65 Maverick, Brimstone, Storm Shadow, Taurus air-to-surface, and Alarm anti-radiation missiles, as well as different types of bombs. The successful design of the Tornado IDS paved the way for more efficient airstrike tactics. Before, reaching the target depended on the navigational skills of the pilot. So, according to general doctrines, each aircraft in a strike group was flying in close formation to avoid losing each other. This way, they were also deceiving the enemy by showing up as a single big aircraft on the enemy's radar. However, this formation made the group more vulnerable to the fire of air defense systems. But thanks to their advanced navigation systems, the tornadoes began to fly in a different formation. In general use, two aircraft in the front flying 3.2 kilometers apart and two other aircraft follow them at a distance of 5 km. So, the enemy's air defense systems cannot gather the fire toward a single point and lose their effectiveness to some degree. The aircraft was baptized with fire in the 1991 Gulf War. The British tornadoes were tasked with destroying heavily defended Iraqi airfields in daylight and from low altitudes. It was the most dangerous airstrike mission, so six aircraft were shut down. Also, one Italian tornado was shut down by the Iraqis. The British, German and Italian tornadoes also participated in the 1999 Kosovo War. It was Germany's first offensive air mission since the Second World War. The tornadoes of the German Air Force flew 2,108 hours in 446 sorties and fired 236 AGM-88 Harm anti-radiation missiles. Also, the Italian Tornado ECRs fired another 115 AGM-88 harm missiles during the war. In 2003, the British Tornadoes fought against Iraq once again. They fired the Storm Shadow missiles for the first time in combat. Unfortunately, because of the IFF error, one British Tornado GR4 was shut down by the Patriot missiles as a friendly fire incident. The British and Italian tornadoes played wider roles during the 2011 military intervention in Libya. Germany deployed its tornado ECRs to Turkey first and Jordan later against ISIS. They flew nearly 7,500 hours in 2,500 sorties over Syria and Iraq. Similarly, the British tornadoes were also deployed to Cyprus against ISIS. The Royal Saudi Air Force lost three tornadoes during Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen. At least one aircraft was shut down by the S-75 air defense missiles, whose NATO reporting name is SA-2 Guideline. The Tornado ADV was the watchdog of the extensive gap between Iceland and the British Islands for many years. They protected the Falklands until 2009. However, these aircraft did not fire their weapon in anger, even though they performed countless combat air patrol missions in real wars. Now, the last remaining tornadoes count the days for a well-deserved retirement. They fulfilled their duties successfully. These pure-blood warrior aircraft left a mark wherever they fought. The tornado became the first legend of the pan-European aviation industry. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.